Hello and welcome to the worst video that you're gonna see on the CB Media YouTube channel in 2023 because it is time for the annual FAQ video. The month of January is our largest subscriber growth ever. 60,000 new subscribers. Definitely time for an FAQ video so you guys get to know me, who I am, and what I do. My name is Chad, I'm originally from Atlanta. I'm a car guy, motorsports enthusiast. I live here in Thailand and I run the YouTube channel CB Media. We're gonna jump right into this with what is probably the most frequently asked question. Why do you live in Thailand? For me personally and my lifestyle and what my priorities are, Thailand for the money just offers me a lifestyle that I have not found anywhere else on planet Earth. I love hot tropical weather. I love beaches, I love big mega cities, I love mountains, I love great roads, I love motorsports, I love nightlife, I love spicy food, I love pretty girls, I love nice people. What is there not to love about Thailand? And you can live a great lifestyle in this country for well, well under $3,000 a month. In many places like Pattaya or Chiang Mai, even under $2,000 thousand dollars a month you can live a fantastic life i mean if you're asking why i live in thailand it's probably because you've never been here before you should come over take a vacation and see what all the hype is about next question is do you have a girlfriend and if not why um just one girlfriend just one of them <laughs> i'm joking i am officially single and the reason for that is I'm very impulsive. I tend to decide to leave Bangkok and go to Phuket or Chiang Mai or Japan or Dubai and I just up and leave and sometimes I'm gone for months at a time. And if I had a girlfriend, I think that would kind of cause issues. Um, she would either have to quit her job and then come travel with me or I would have to leave her and go to other places for months at a time. And I don't know, it just doesn't make sense. For my current lifestyle, uh, casual dating fits me better at this point in my life. And before we get too deep into this, I do wanna let you guys know that the CB Media apparel line has been fully restocked. A lot of you have been complaining because certain colors and certain sizes of certain designs have been out of stock for the past couple months. We have totally restocked stocked everything. They are only available at CB Media on YouTube.com. The link is in the video description. Next question is how do I find out about Thai car meets and motorsports events? This is a question that I get asked pretty often and to be honest it's not easy. It's very difficult. The only reason that I know about most of these events is my Thai car friends tell me. Um, and a lot of people said hey you should make like a, a calendar or something on your website of car events. The problem with this is most car events here, because they don't have to deal with like permits or insurance, many things are planned very, very last minute. They'll message me and go, Chad, there's a cool drag race happening. You should go film it and make a YouTube video. And I'm like, awesome. When is it and where is it? And they're like, oh, it's at the drag strip and it's happening now, like right now. They're like at the drag strip at that moment and they're messaging me about the drag race. I have to grab my camera equipment, get a taxi, and head straight to the drag strip. How do you support yourself? At this point, I would say about 80% of my income is YouTube and YouTube-related income streams. A follow-up question to that, which comes from a lot of our other content creators and people that want to do YouTube, is how do those income streams like break down? Like, What is the percentage of Google AdSense versus brand deals versus apparel sales at cbmediaonyoutube.com versus Patreon versus like, how does that break down? Like what is the pie chart of your YouTube income streams? And I'm actually going to save that question for kind of toward the end of the video. We'll come back to that question. That right there is what you call an audience retention technique. It's to get you to stay longer in the video. It's YouTube tips from CB Media. But one way many YouTubers diversify their YouTube income streams is with brand deals. And speaking of that, this video is sponsored by NordVPN. Just go to nordvpn.com slash cbmedia or use my coupon code, which is cbmedia at checkout, and you'll get a massive discount off your two-year plan plus an additional month 
for free. Like you're probably watching this video because you're interested in living a certain lifestyle, traveling the world, moving to Thailand, going around Southeast Asia. And I'm telling you this now, a VPN is a vital part of living this lifestyle. If you're moving over here permanently or you're just traveling for a couple weeks or a month, you have to have a VPN. Like there's no way once you leave your home country and you end up over on this part of the world that you're going to be able to live your normal everyday life online without a VPN. Everything from watching Netflix to logging online to pay your credit card bill becomes really problematic because a lot of these companies, especially financial institutions, once they see your IP address is outside of their home country and you're in a place in Southeast Asia, they will instantly block you from logging onto their website because they're just worried about like fraud issues and they're worried that somebody is hacking into your account. All you have to do to fix this problem is to log on to NordVPN change your country, change your IP address back to your home country, and the problem is solved. Once again, nordvpn.com slash cbmedia, or use my coupon code, which is cbmedia at checkout, and you're gonna get a huge discount off your two-year plan, plus an additional month for free. Next question is, do I plan on filming content in any other countries besides Thailand in 2023? And yes, I do plan on doing some more traveling, but it probably won't be till the summertime. Currently, we're in like the peak season here in Thailand. The weather's beautiful. The temperature's nice. It doesn't rain often, and there's a ton of car events. So currently, I'm happy where I am in Thailand, but this summer, I'll definitely be headed to Tokyo for one month. So stay tuned for the Japan videos. Next question is, why do you delete your live streams? And the reason I delete my live streams is simple. It's two reasons. Uh, one, the entire point of me doing a live stream is to have a real life one on one conversation with you guys. We can actually have a real conversation. It's a two way conversation. I say something, you reply to it. I reply to that. You ask a question, I answer it. YouTube videos like this one right now, it is a one-way conversation. I am talking to you and you cannot respond. The point of live videos is to have a two-way conversation. Once that live stream is ended and that two-way conversation is no longer possible, there's no point in the live stream. There's zero point. I might as well make a YouTube video. And live streams, like I, I think this video is terrible. Jesus Christ, live streams as a piece of content is terrible. They are horrible. I would be embarrassed if somebody came to my YouTube channel and watched one of my live streams. They're just very, very poor quality, no editing. It's just a terrible piece of content. But the reason I do them is to have in real life, not in real life, but at least a two-way conversation with you guys. But once that live stream is over, that is no longer possible. So the live stream no longer serves its purpose. So they're instantly deleted. But replays are available on my Patreon. Once again, the link to my Patreon is in the video description. Okay, this one's gonna be interesting. Next, frequently asked question. If I come to Thailand and I meet a girl, how do I tell if she's a lady boy? Listen, there's one way to tell 100% of the time. If you meet a girl in Thailand, to figure out if she is a real female or if she is a lady boy. Just look for the penis. If you meet a girl and she has a penis, it's 100% guaranteed she is a lady boy. You're welcome. <laughs> no, for real. The way to tell is there's a couple ways. One is the size of the hands. People say check for an Adam's apple. They shave the Adam apples off here, for real. They shave, which in my head, that surgery sounds just horrific. But uh, the way to really check to see if she's a lady boy or not is two ways. One is the voice. If she has like a deep voice, like if you're walking down the street in Sukhumvit in Bangkok and she's like, yo, what's up, bro? Uh, she's probably a lady boy. Or the second way to test is the size of the hands. They can't change the size of their hands. So if she has abnormally large hands, like if she can palm a basketball, uh, she's probably a lady boy. Yeah. Okay. Let's move on from this question. It's ridiculous. The next one is a very tough one. It is what is going on with the Titanic, my 13B 
turbo rotary tie long tail riverboat that I was building to celebrate 250,000 subscribers and give away to one of you guys. Now, I'm going to have to shoot an entire video about this subject, like another video of me standing here talking to a camera for like, this video is going to be long, like it's going to be 30 plus minutes explaining the shit show that I've been through for the past two years over this boat. This boat was a massive mistake, but the short version of it is the Titanic is sitting in a warehouse, um, the same warehouse that it was sitting in a year ago in storage, because for the second time, we've had to pull the boat out of the shop. So there's, there's three shops responsible for building this boat. One shop is the engine shop, the, the people that specialize in rotaries. Amazing. Rock stars. The second shop is the shop that was in charge of building the hull of the boat. Again, total rock stars. The third shop is the shop that is in charge of taking the engine and the hull of the boat and assembling it together and turning it into a running tie long tail river boat. This shop... Um, dealing with them has been a complete nightmare. I have paid them every dime that they've ever asked for instantly. And something that should have taken a month is still not completed 18 months later. It has been, I start talking about this and I just get really fucking angry. Um, it's going to be really difficult to make this video because I think I'm just going to drop a lot of F-bombs. And I'm going to get really emotional. I'm probably going to start screaming because it just really fucking pisses me off when I talk about this. Uh, we're going to come back to this subject in a couple weeks. I'm going to make a dedicated video, like a video like this of me just standing here telling you the entire story. Next question is what camera gear do I personally use? I have a Sony a7R4 as my photo camera. I was a Nikon guy for like a decade, but a few years ago I switched to Sony for my photo camera. But most of my YouTube videos, including this one, I film with my iPhone 13 Pro Max. Now these days I also, when I, I attend motorsports events, like drag racing events, drifting events, road race events, I hire one of my Thai videographer friends. I have a group of friends that they're, they're, they're Thai motorsports videographers. Like they shoot MotoGP, they shoot for Ford Motorsports, for Yamaha Thailand. They, that's what they do is they film motorsports content. And I pay one of them to come out and shoot my B-roll, shoot my action shots. So they use a Sony mirrorless and you know, like a 7200 zoom lens, a shotgun mic. At the end of the event, they pull their memory card out of their camera, give it to me, I transfer the footage to my laptop, and then I edit everything together using their Sony footage for like B-roll action shots, my iPhone 13 Pro Max for my A-roll, my vlog stuff, and then I also have a DJI Mini 2 for a drone, and then I have this Rode wireless go-to mic system as well. And I do not use a gimbal. I do have a DJI gimbal that I use for my live streams, but I just have a Manfrotto tripod that I use that I mount my iPhone in that, and the stabilization in the iPhone is so great, I don't really need a gimbal. Next question is concerning cars in Thailand and what people should buy. The question is, if you're a car enthusiast in Thailand and you're on a budget, what are the best cars to buy? As a lot of you know, cars are insanely expensive in Thailand because of what is like a two to 300% import duty tax. Like a brand new 5.0 Mustang GT here costs 160,000 US dollars. A brand new R35 Nissan GTR is $400,000. Yes, it is insane, but there's a few cars that you can purchase for what is a pretty good deal. There's really three of them. Well, one of them is three, and then there's another. It's so the BMWs, the BMW E30, E36, and E46. Great cars for the money here. You can actually buy nice ones for what is probably cheaper than back home in the US. The second car is the Nissan Sephiro. Especially if you want to do drag racing or drifting, the Nissan Sephiro is definitely the go to budget car here in Thailand. The third option is a front-wheel drive one, and that is the Honda 
EG hatchback. You can buy really, really nice Honda EG hatchbacks here, fully restored, case swap, all the good stuff for like 10 to 15,000 US dollars. So if you're coming to Thailand and you're on a budget and you want a cool car, old school BMW E30, E36, E46, Nissan Sephiro if you want to drag race or drift, or Honda Civic EG hatchback. One popular question I get is how did I end up here? Like how did you end up in Thailand? How did this all come to be? And to make a very long story short is back in the day, like in 2015, I was living in Atlanta. I was a professional photographer and journalist for a bunch of car magazines based out of California. I also owned a small advertising, marketing, media company where I help businesses create content and then use that content for digital advertising and social media. Anyway, I got sucked down this rabbit hole of YouTube videos like one does. And I started watching all these like travel videos about like these guys traveling through Southeast Asia and staying in hostels and like living on like a thousand dollars a month going through Vietnam and the Philippines and Thailand and all this type of stuff. I realized a lot of my income, you know, probably at least 50% of my income was from doing photo shoots and writing articles for the magazines of car shows, car races, and then like actual car features of cool stuff that I found throughout the US. And I realized if I could find car culture in other places in the world, essentially what I could do is I could go there, photograph cars and car events, write articles, send them to the magazines, invoice them, and it could fund my travels. Holy shit, like light bulb moment went off. And that's how I funded my travels. Basically a year traveling around Southeast Asia. And Thailand, specifically Bangkok, became kind of my home base. Because, well, I just love the food, I love the people, I love the culture. And it has such a great automotive and motorsports scene that it was so easy for me to go out every single week and shoot photos and write articles. Once the magazine industry kind of started to die off a little bit, like the end of like, you know, around 2019 or whatever, uh, I decided I really, really wanted to focus on starting a YouTube channel. And that is when in December of 2019, I started the CB Media YouTube channel. And well, the rest is history. What is going on with the cream pie to pie tour? My BMW E30, also known as cream pie, which is a pandem wide body, fully restored BMW E30, powered by an S65 four liter BMW M3 V8 and matching six speed transmission. I love this car. This is a car that I don't think I'll ever sell this car. I absolutely love cream pie. And the reason it's named Cream Pie is because the eventual goal with the car is to drive it from Chiang Mai to the city of Pai in northern Thailand. This road from Chiang Mai to Pai is hands down the most epic road I've been on in my entire life. It makes the tail of the dragon look like a Florida highway. It is insane. And this is something that I've been wanting to do for such a long time, ever since I bought Cream Pie. Um, the reason we haven't actually done it yet is simple, reliability issues. Owning an old German car that the entire wiring harness was done custom here in Thailand is a recipe for a problematic vehicle to say the least. So while the mechanics of the car, the engine, the transmission, everything is stock, the wiring harness is completely custom. And for the past year and a half, we've just been constantly chasing bugs in this wiring system. And I'm hoping in the next couple months, we're gonna get all this resolved and I can finally drive cream pie from Chiang Mai to Pai. Okay, let's circle back to that YouTube money question. The one that I use as an audience retention technique. Hey, you made it this far in the video, so I guess it worked, right? So this is a question a lot of other content creators ask me, like what percentage of your income is YouTube ads or Patreon versus apparel sales? Like, like how, does, how does that work out? And you know, one thing that I learned very early on, this is back from you know, my experience uh, with my advertising agency, talking to other content creators is one of the most important things you can do is diversify the way your YouTube income stream is set up. You know, this time of year in January, 
ad rates are very low. So, well, hopefully in January, you can make that up with apparel sales or getting more Patreons or whatever. But anyway, so this is how my YouTube stream pulled up. Anyway, so I have, I have notes here. So this is basically how my YouTube income pie chart breaks down. Essentially about 50% of my income is Google AdSense. The ads that you see at the beginning of the video, in the middle of the video, at the end of the video, that pop up at the bottom. About 25% of that is brand deals, working with companies. I have, at this point, three, four, or five companies that I work with on a regular basis doing brand deals. That's about 25%. Next up is apparel. About 20% of my YouTube income comes from selling apparel. Once again, CB Media on YouTube.com to get your CB Media t-shirts and hoodies. After that, about 10% of my income off of YouTube comes from Patreon. If you're one of my Patreon members and you support me on Patreon, you guys freaking rock. The last percentage is about 5% of my income is PayPal donations. And that is how my YouTube income pie chart breaks down. Next question, is this video finally over? It's terrible and I'm tired of staring at your stupid face. The answer to that question is yes, it's over, finally. Thank you for your support here on the CB Media YouTube channel and I will see you in a much, much, much better video very soon. Peace.